Hello friends, it's Zagar Sirius here and I'm coming to you with my second video now. Um, I want to talk today a little bit about uh, vibration and resonance. Um, <clears throat> I have a friend, of, uh, a cousin of mine who's in the group here and um, they recently asked me, what's what's all this talk um, in the group when people say, um, you know, I'm, I'm vibrating or my vibrations are high today. Uh, they didn't quite understand that. Um, so I just thought I'd take a little time to elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, for people who might be new here to the group and who don't really understand. Um, and that's a, it's an important part here. Uh, besides, you know, parallel realities, the other half of the group name is Laws of Vibration. Um, so I figured I'd talk a little bit about that because, you know, I've read up on the subject quite a bit. And, uh, you know, basically what I'm going to present here is stuff I've read in books and uh, watched on TV on, on the Science Channel, shows like Through the Wormhole and stuff like that. Um, so uh, vibrations and resonance, basically. Um, it, sometimes... Everything on a, on a quantum level is vibrating always, okay? All matter is always vibrating or resonating. Um, and what I mean by that, this started out as a theory, uh, but now uh, quantum physicists are now in the process of proving it. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Schrodinger's cat, it was, which was a thought experiment uh, started by a psychiatrist named Schrodinger, obviously. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> the experiment goes like this. It's something like, okay, there's a cat in a box, uh, and the box is closed and you can't see the cat. And <clears throat> until a person goes over and opens the box, the cat's in two different states. Uh, well, actually, let me back up a little bit. Okay, so inside the box with the cat uh, is like a jar of poisonous gas or something. And when you open the box, you've got a 50-50 chance uh, that the gas could be released and could kill the cat or the gas won't be released and the cat will be okay and the cat will live. Okay, and what Schrodinger said was, what if in reality... The cat is in both states before that box is opened. Before a person comes over and opens that box, uh, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. Um, and then the action when the person opens the box triggers uh, one or the other reality to lock in and become real. Okay, uh, but before the box is opened, it's in both states. Okay, and now we've coined a term, term for this nowadays. Scientists have it's called quantum superposition, and uh, quantum physics is now proving that all matter basically can be in two states at the same time uh, until like someone comes along and observes it. Uh, I'll get into the conscious observation in part in a second. Um, but <clears throat> basically, so like, um, you know, molecules or atoms, uh, they can be like in a wave state or a particle state. Uh, and it was believed at one time that uh, sound and light were waves. Uh, they were energy. And that, you know, um, things like matter, like it was a substance, uh, it was a particle. Uh, but, you know, ever since uh, Einstein came up with the theory of relativity and proved everything's all interconnected, uh, now energy and matter are not as separate as we thought they were. Um, so, so things like light and sound are not just waves. They can be particles, too. They can, they can be both. Uh, it can be both a particle or a wave. Uh, and again... Um, uh, human consciousness or any type of consciousness uh, comes along and, uh, and observes it uh, can can lock the state uh, into into can lock the thing into one state or another um, so that it's now you know one reality becomes real um, and that's what we mean um, you know when you hear people saying that you make your own reality or you create your own reality um, it's it's conscious human consciousness uh, comes along I, I keep saying human you know there's other beings besides humans, greater beings than us, extraterrestrials and extra dimensional beings. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. That's for another topic. Uh, until a consciousness comes along and, and observes it, um, you know, it's in two states. And then when, so, when a conscious being observes, then it locks it into one state or the other. Um, so the, the way that uh, quantum physics is now proving this, let me give you one example. Um, so like they can hook up a video camera onto a microscope to the eyepiece of a microscope and they can run the camera uh viewing molecules underneath the, the you know the lens or whatever um while while no human beings watching and see what the molecule you know later go back and watch it on tape and see what the molecules were doing you know when no one was looking and then say you know at a certain time 1 p.m a person comes over and sticks their eye up to the eyepiece of the microscope and looks down and then all of a sudden the, the behavior patterns of the molecules changed when a person came and watched, okay? Uh, science is doing this, they're, they're proving this, that this is real. And another example 
um, where, you know, they took uh, electrons and they fired them through uh, a slot onto like a background like wall or panel or something. And again, uh, ran a videotape of what was happening and had a person sitting there uh, basically with their eyes closed, you know, at the beginning of the experiment. And then, you know, at a certain point, you know, in the experiment, open their eyes. And then all of a sudden the patterns on the, on the wall that the electrons were forming changed when that person opened their eyes. Um, and again, with, with the use of video cameras, a uh, combination of technology and human observance, uh, we can track, you know, the, the, these things and show that, you know, <laughs> that your observance or a conscious being's observance of an event changes the event. Okay. Um, so that's what we mean. Like when we say you create your own reality, it's not just mystic mumbo jumbo. Uh, science is proving this. And, uh, you know, you can still be a scientific mind and have spirituality at the same time. Uh, I'm going to do another video later. Uh, you know, that's another topic again. Uh, so I'm going to do another video on that. Uh, but <clears throat> I just wanted to talk about um, vibrations and sound and how important they are. And also um, how they can heal, too. Um, <clears throat> I recently learned uh, a friend of mine on Facebook, and who I think was also in this group, uh, introduced me to the concept of binaural beats and how um, different uh, sound frequencies affect our brain waves. And you've got uh, you know different types of brain waves. There's alpha waves, beta waves, gamma waves, delta waves, theta waves, and they all represent different things. Um, so like uh, I think theta is when you're in like a relaxed state, uh, and delta is when you're in deep sleep. Uh, beta is your just conscious everyday activity, like when you're at work, going about your day, and, and alpha is more of like um, when you're when you're concentrating or, or trying. Uh, to memorize or learn something. Um, so <clears throat> different uh, frequencies affect us in different ways. And, uh, and beta can actually be kind of negative because um, it's, it's associated, beta waves are, of our brain are associated uh, with times of stress and anxiety. Um, so a, a little bit of personal information about me. Uh, I was before in my old life, before I woke up, I was very much into heavy metal music and uh, dark, dark tones, dark ominous music, like uh, Metallica and Megadeth and White Zombie and, and stuff like that, um, which I, I recently learned after reading an article about uh, these these binaural beats and uh, psychoacoustic healing. It's called healing through sound. That that beta waves are primarily used in heavy metal, um, and again, um, beta waves will keep you in a state of uh, stress or anxiety or fear. Um, so after learning this. I'm currently reformatting my entire music collection and I'm getting rid of those darker things. I said goodbye to Metallica and Megadeth and I'm saying hello to John Lennon and U2 and, and more positive, uplifting music. Now, I'm not completely changing my whole entire being because I've always liked rock and roll, uh, all kinds of rock and roll. Uh, but again, I, I focused a lot on the, the heavy and the darker stuff uh, earlier. So I, I'm getting rid of that now. I'm, I'm eliminating that from my life. Uh, because I don't want to be in that state of anxiety and stress anymore, um, and which also was keeping me kind of uh, into an addiction. You know, uh, I drank a lot before I woke up, and and I'm now I'm changing my behaviors. Um, I'm using this this new found information about binaural beats uh, to overcome addiction. And, and since I've changed my music, I'm I'm beating it now. I'm, as I make this video, I'm going like something like uh, 14 days with no beer. Uh, and, um, on like day four with absolutely no alcohol at all. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm doing better, you know, I'm getting better. Um, and it's all because I changed my habits and my listening habits. And, and when you think about it, the, the spoken word too, um, has a certain power to it and, and resonates. Uh, you, you can make that when you, when you sing a song or, um, when you speak something, you, you're, you're resonating, you're using sound and you're making that, um, kind of like your reality. So like, an example of like Metallica's song, Am I Evil? You know, I used to think in my old days that, oh, it didn't matter. You know, everybody's got a little bit of good and a little bit of evil. I mean, we're all both, you know, yin and yang. Um, but, you know, if I'm singing that song, Am I Evil? Yes, I, I am, man. Yes, I am. I'm reaffirming that I'm evil and I am not evil. Okay. So that's why I needed to stop that behavior and get into something more positive. Um, you know, and, and listen to something like John Lennon and sing, you know, give peace a chance or um, even some of the classic classic rock is OK, like Led Zeppelin and Cream and, and uh, Queen. You know, all of my love, the song All of My Love by Led Zeppelin has a whole new meaning for me since I awakened now. I, I listen to the words and I'm understanding it for the first time. 
even though I've been listening to Led Zeppelin's music for 30 years, um, it's crazy to me that now all of a sudden the words make more sense than they used to. Um, so <clears throat> I've completely changed my, my music collection. And, and by doing that, just by listening to more positive music, I'm changing my, my mindset. My brain waves are now focusing on alpha instead of beta. And, I, and I'm improving myself. I'm beating addiction. <clears throat> I'm not drinking like I was before. I also gave up smoking, not cigarettes, but something else. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so, I, you know, I'm, I'm overcoming these things with sound and with vibration. Um, and, and sound can also heal you. Uh, I wanted to mention an album that I, that I like to listen to now that I recently got. Uh, Vibrational Sound Healing. Uh, it's a combination of a doctor, uh, Andrew Weil, or Weil, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, um, you know, uses these kind of concepts about, you know, binaural beats and stuff. And then a, a musician, uh, Kimba Aram, who uses a variety of different instruments. It's these On the cover here, it shows um, Tibetan bowls, <coughs> um, but uh, there's a lot of different instruments that they use, like harp and piano and gongs and things. You know, think about a gong for a second. When you strike it, it resonates. Okay, so that's the kind of thing we're talking about how um, vibrations can, can affect us. Um, so this, this has been a very positive thing. This is like new age uh, meditation music. It's not something I listen to for fun. You know, when I want to have fun, when I'm out working in the yard, I'm listening to, you know, like I said, classic rock, like Zeppelin and, and, and stuff like that, John Lennon and, and positive things, uh, not the dark stuff anymore. Um, but this is this will put you into a deep meditative state and you can actually heal yourself uh, with this stuff. Um, this is these traditions are ancient, ancient traditions. You guys know from my last video that I'm into ancient philosophy. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Native American uh, and Chinese uh, ancient traditions, musical tra traditions that are used and instruments that are used here on this album. So it's a great tool uh, and a great way to heal. Um, so when I, when I talk about uh, all this stuff and it, it's all started, okay, so at the beginning of the video I said, you know, I want to explain to people who are new to this what vibrations are all about. When you start thinking about this stuff and you, and you believe in these things, uh, just like once your first Mandela affected and, and you start to see stuff and now you go, oh, wow, you know, uh, before I watched shows like Fringe and The Flash and I knew, I thought parallel realities were real, but now that I've been Mandela affected, I know it's real. Okay, I've moved into a different phase. I went from just believing into actually knowing. Okay, and, and that's kind of like where I am with this stuff now uh, with vibrations. Once you start just not just believing, but actually knowing that it's real because uh, there's science to back it up. Again, it's not just mystic mumbo jumbo. Once you get to that stage where you've moved from from belief to, to actually knowing, um, it's very, very powerful. And you can actually feel it. You can feel yourself uh, vibrating and resonating. Um, and that's what people are talking about uh, when they say my vibrations are high today. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you shake. I, I went to the dentist recently and they were doing x-rays and they have to put like things in your mouth that you have to bite down on. And for some reason, you know, my left side was, I was always shaking. I, it was hard to hold that uh, little plate or whatever they call it in place. Uh, Cause I was, <laughs> my vibrations were so high. I was like literally shaking. I don't know why it was only my left side, the right side. I was fine. Uh, maybe it's cause uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a left, I'm right-handed, which means I'm left-brained and uh, you know, not right-brained. Different people, you know, have a different uh, part of their brain that they use more. So Right-handed people uh, tend to be more logical and, and use the left brain side more, and right brain people tend to be more artistic and creative, uh, and then you know, left-handers. So anyway, um, I hope that helps clarify things a little bit. Um, I don't want to keep this video too long. I want to keep it under 15 minutes. Uh, and I don't want to keep rambling on. Uh, I had some other topics too in relation to this. What holds everything together? Magnetism. Uh, I think that's going to be my next video. I'll talk more about that. Uh, because, you know, if everything's always resonating and vibrating, what what stops it from just flying apart, right? Have you guys heard of entropy? That's the natural way. Uh, nature just has a way of, of things to just disintegrate and fall apart. Uh, it's called entropy. And so you want to say, well, if everything's always resonating and vibrating, what stops it from all flying apart? And I believe that's magnetism. Uh, but again, I don't want to go too long into this video. So uh, that'll be the next topic. Anyway, uh, I hope this helps some people understand that you know, what we talk about here isn't just mystical mumbo jumbo. There's science behind it too. And again, science and spirituality can coexist. That'll be the other video after the magnetism video. Hopefully you guys don't get too sick of my videos. Hopefully you like them. Anyway, peace and love guys. Have a good one.